and I'm Alvaro, a C++ engineer at Apentra Solutions. And we are a company based in Spain, Europe, as Helen said, that develops Code. And now Code is a tool that is designed to make it both easy to develop modern and optimize Fortran C and C++ codes. So since our tool is available to everyone using Permutel, this is a great chance to help a large number of developers. So thank you for the opportunity. So Helen previously went over the planned schedule. So I'm just going to continue with today's first lecture, which is about the basic capabilities of Code for the modernization and optimization of codes. And tomorrow we will take a look at some of the Code features that are intended for the analysis of large scale codes, as well as other the live demonstration and guided exercises that we have prepared for you. So first of all, we understand that your main goal here at Permuter is to use the power of four systems to run simulation software. Using a code that allows you to obtain accurate and fast results while still being easy to understand and to work with. And to this end, we at Code advocate for a two-step approach that involves the modernization of the code and then worrying about other things such as the optimization. By modernization, we mean using modern programming practices during development because these help increase the quality of your code and facilitate the maintenance. Some examples include updating uh, parts of a large project that are using legacy code, uh, using new language features that allow for an easier programming, and for, ins for instance, also avoiding vendor-specific language extensions of some compilers to ensure the portability of your code across multiple environments. During all the modernization process, you will often find bugs as a result of their factorizations. And ultimately, by making the code more readable and easy to work with, you also help avoid introducing bugs in the future. And overall, the intention of pushing forward the modernization is to ensure at all times that your code is correct. Because for instance, no matter how fast the code runs, the result, if the results are incorrect, it won't be of use to you. And now Kodi supports the analysis of Fortran, C, and C++ codes, which are languages used across many industries in simulation software. And coincidentally, these languages are also used by most of you according to the most recent statistics. So this gives us the opportunity to help a large number of developers. And I specifically pointed out the necessity for the modernization of codes, because these languages, as we can see in the table at the right side, have been around for several decades. So as time goes on, languages usually introduce new programming features, new programming best practices that ideally should be followed. Among these languages, we, from our experience, have observed that the Fortran community is the one that expresses the most concerns about dealing with legacy code. So since we've been putting a lot of effort recently into supporting the modernization of Fortran developers, I would like to present this use case to you as an example of how we try to help the development of codes. So some months ago, our initial approach was to reach out to this Fortran community to try to understand their needs when dealing with legacy code, because no one knows better this better than Fortran programmers themselves. And now on the screen, you should be able to see some of the responses we obtained for the Fortran discourse community when asking these questions. And you can see how many users highlight how dealing with legacy code usually leads to difficult maintenance as well as bugs in the program. So after a few weeks, um, of work of working with the community, we were able to collect a lot of feedback that allowed us to define a series of top recommendations when working with legacy Fortran code. And the intention of these recommendations is to provide guidance to other Fortran developers into what would be the main areas to focus on efforts when trying to modernize the code. In addition to this series of recommendations, the feedback from the community also allows us to define a series of checks for the modernization of Fortran. The checks are the ones that provide the actual guidance with actionable steps on how to apply the recommendations to modernize the code. So you can see, for example, a specific actions such as encapsulating external procedures within modules, 
or using the implicit non clause in Fortran to disable the implicit declaration of variables. All these checks are being added to the open catalog of best practices for modernization and optimization. And this is a project that we have been working on on Code for multiple years. And I would like to share it with you briefly. Let me open it here in the browser. So are you able to see a GitHub repository now? Yes. OK, that's yep. great. So this project is completely open source. So feel free to check it out and contribute your knowledge. It's open to the community. And as of today, the open catalog consists of tens of checks that you can see here, applicable to different programming languages that we saw earlier. And for each of the checks, you can check out detailed documentation about what the specific issue is, how to solve it, before and after code examples, etc. So let me go back to the slides. And now the question is, how does Code D fit in all of this? So to recap, uh, we first uh, defined with the help of the Fortran community a series of recommendations on how to deal with legacy Fortran code. And then we started adding the checks to the open catalog to try to define how to actually change the code to follow those recommendations. And now imagine all the time that would take a person to manually review thousands or millions of lines of code to try to identify those checks from the open catalog that are applicable to the code. And this is where the value of Code is because it automates the analysis of this phase by reporting all the checks of the open catalog that are applicable to a given code. And the best part of this is that this is a production ready tool that has been successfully applied to large scale Fortran projects as of today. You can see some examples on the screen how these projects can reach up to millions of lines of code and Code manages to successfully analyze them and report thousands of improvement opportunities regarding the, both the modernization and the optimization of the codes. So to do this, Code performs some static analysis of the code. And this means that we can't analyze every line in a project without needing to run the code and report improvement opportunities in every part. As I said, Code identifies the checks of the open catalog that are applicable and then uses, uses all the identified opportunities to produce different types of reports. We have different reports targeted at different user profiles, such as managers or developers, as we will see later. In addition to this, Code can automatically rewrite the code in certain scenarios to apply the identified suggestions. Additionally, we have designed Code so that it is easy to integrate with CI CD systems from day one, and all of the analysis is performed locally on your own machine. So you retain full privacy of your own code. And now going down to the use of Code, we I would like to share a suggested basic workflow of how to use our tool that work, works through different reports that, that we have available. Uh, overall, the intention of this basic workflow is to start from a top-down approach, starting with management or in the reports, and then go down to developer insights that help align the management decisions with the actual technical actions that are performed in a project during the development. So first, to use Code, you will always need a working compiler invocation for the code that you want to analyze. In the following slides, we, we will use this simple matrix multiplication code, which can be compiled, as we see below, with a simple call to, for example, gfortran. And now to use Code, you will simply will have to type, as we can see above, Code, the name of the report, dash dash, and the compiler invocation. Now, for instance, in the following slide, we have the first step of our suggested workflow, which is starting with a technical depth report. The intention of this technical depth report is to quantify as a single number, the technical depth score that is highlighted in blue, all the amount of opportunities that Cody identifies in the code. For instance, in this MATMUL example, Cody identifies a total of 12 applicable checkers from the open catalog that we saw.
you muted, Alvaro? We can't hear you anymore. No. No. Batteries uh, run off. Okay, you're back. Oh, it, it was me, not Alvaro. Okay. Alvaro? Can now, you hear me now, now we can hear it. Yeah. Okay, my headphones just turned off without notice. Sorry okay. about that. Those are good now. Okay, so now that you can hear me, uh, sorry about that. And I believe I was saying that the intention of this first report in our suggested workflow is to quantify the amount of improvement opportunities that could be found in the code. Now, continuing, we have as a second step the screening report. And the intention of, of and while the technical depth quantifies the amount of opportunities found, the screening focuses on identifying among the checks of the open catalog which ones are applicable to the code. So for instance, here we can see detailed down below all the 12 checks that Cody identifies in this MATMUL code. And additionally, Cody orders by priority based on the estimated positive impact, all the checks to help prioritize their factoring efforts. Now, in addition to this, another report that is quite interesting towards the, manage the management figures is the ROI report, which tries to put into perspective the savings that Cody can provide in both time and effort through the automated analysis. And this is done by estimating the amount of effort that would take a person to manually review the code, as I was saying earlier, against all the checks in the open catalog. Now leaning more towards the side of developers, we have the checks report as a complement to the screening report. While the screening identified those checks from the open catalog that are applicable to the code, now the checks report identifies the precise locations in the source code where all the different checks are applicable. On the top half of the slide, we can see the default output, which pinpoints for each improvement opportunity, the particular source file, as well as line and call numbers. And typically, you will also use the verbose output of the checks that we can see below, which expands each improvement opportunity to provide detailed information. Now, for instance, we can see that for the check that is shown below, Cody suggests the usage of the implicit non fortran clause to disable the implicit declaration of variables. And in addition to, the, to this, we can see that Cody suggests the use of the autofix feature. As I was saying earlier, Cody can automatically rewrite the code in certain scenarios. And now, if you try to apply the suggested invocation, we can see down below how Cody included in the original MATMUL code an implicit non clause. It identified the variables that had no declaration, it also included it. And there's also an initial comment because Cody makes it explicit every time that the code is modified by the tool. So the developers can double check the changes to ensure the correctness. For instance, we have here an implicit non to fix, but we expect in coming weeks to re continue releasing new versions of Cody, including other interesting auto fixes for the modernization of Fortran, such as automatically including the intent of procedures. And now, up to this moment, we have been running Cody in its default analysis mode, but we also have a series of arguments that are quite useful to customize the Cody analysis to your specific needs. And to see why this is important, we, go, we can go back to the previous MATMUL example. And by default, Cody does not report parallelization improvement opportunities. And this is because the actual optimization recommendations depend heavily on the target execution environment. So since we are interested in this course in using both CPU and GPU parallelization, we will need to include the dash dash target touch flag to enable those types of recommendations. And now if, you, if we run the checks report again on that MATMUL example, we can see below that two new improvement opportunities trigger, one related to multithreading parallelism on CPU and another related to offloading computations to the GPU. Both of these checks have uh, autofixes uh, uh, available 
And just to pick an example, we can focus on the offloading one. And we can see in this particular, particular scenario that Cody even supports different drug write modes because it can include both OpenMP and OpenSSC directives. So just as an example, we will pick the OpenMP one, which is the recommended, and apply it to the code. And we can see below how Koji included in the computational loop of that matrix multiplication code the necessary directives to off offload the computations to a GPU, for instance. It is also worth noting that sometimes Koji will need your help to further optimize the automatically inserted directives. And in this particular case, Koji needs, needs, let's say, your help to further optimize the array ranges that are copied to the device. In any case, Kodi will always make it explicit, as we can see here, by stating a series of fine-tuning suggestions of the inserted programs. And in addition to this, we also have a dash dash compiler driven mode flag that allows Kodi to, ident to identify what, which ones would be the best programs for a certain compiler that you're using. We will take a look at this feature uh, next on the live demos by my colleague Ulysses. And in addition to the uh, dash dash target arch flag, another, another interesting one is the dash dash check ID flag, which allows you to focus the analysis on just the specific checks. This will be especially useful when we analyze file uh, projects consisting of multiple files. But just as an example, previously in the original checks report, we had all the information above. And now if we add the dash dash check ID flag, we can focus, for instance, on those improvement opportunizations that are related just to disabling the implicit declaration of variables. And lastly, just to finish, in addition to allowing you to focus the analysis on specific checks, Cody also has support for filters to focus the analysis on the specific parts of the source code. You will probably use more of more these features in the second day, but just to give you a very brief overview, Kodi supports the analysis of using filters by file, by function names, as well as by line and call numbers to point to different loops. So in, just to give you a brief, a brief recap of what we just saw, we now understand how simulation of software should ideally follow a code that is maintainable and that allows to to obtain high-speed results. And to this end, we advocate for this two-step approach of first, making sure that your code is modern and then worry about the optimization. Because the modernization is crucial to make sure that the code produces correct results at all times. This includes tasks such, such as updating, updating legacy components of projects, avoiding vendor-specific extensions, or using new language features. But in any case, the ultimate intention is to improve both the correctness and the maintainability of your code. And to this end, Kodi will be able to help you in both the modernization and the optimization parts, as we saw in these previous examples, for instance, with the modernization checks related to the Fortran code, as well as by generating OpenMP or Open and OpenACC pragmas to automatically uh, parallelize the code. And during the upcoming labs, don't forget to use at all times the documentation available in the open catalog and to check out the details and the code examples to try to understand how Kodi is trying to improve your code, as well as use all the autofix capabilities when available to automatically improve the code. And that could be all of my part. Thank you for the attention. And if you want to add any details, Helen. This is good. And now I don't have anything. So if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will lend the presentation back to my colleague Ulysses so that he can perform the live demos. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, sure. So some compilers might have problems with, uh, let's say, Fortran 2018 instructions. I've seen that. Uh, is there a way to dial down the modern mo modernization of the you know we'll say 2008 instead of 2018 constructs do you mean to filter down the recommendations so that they only refer to up to this point of the fortran language history right right 
that's uh, indeed an interesting question. Thank you for suggesting it. Some customers have suggested uh, this feature and we are considering it to implement it in Cody as mm -hmm. another option. So we'll definitely note it down because it seems to have some traction. Thank you. Mm -hmm.